let's talk about vocal production okay but before that if you could slightly tell us about uh, i know you have a nice collection of guitars and you're very fond of guitars and uh, 13 as of now 13 and counting <laughs> great and the beautiful piece that you're holding here the martin yeah this is a yeah this is a it's a 175 years anniversary it's a 1935 sunburst reissue actually wow. so yeah it's wow. a like a rare piece this 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 has been your passion also in terms of uh, absolutely i the thing is that i'm not a guitar player actually but uh, uh, i just believe that um, having good guitars is really important for any producer i mean at least for me personally speaking because uh, I know what sound I want. I know what the sound that I, that I have in my head, you know. Uh, so even if I'm not going to play the part, even if I'm going to call a guitar player, very often uh, I have a specific sound that I'm looking for. So I have a collection of guitars because each guitar is unique. Each guitar has its own characteristic and has its own sound. And you know, I mean, one person that I've totally learned that from is Ehsan. You know, Ehsan has I think thirty. Thirty guitars now, but like probably more, and he just keeps buying more. Every guitar he actually makes a point to use on his projects, and you can actually hear that because you you hear his soundtracks and you hear the guitar sounds and the way he records them, and you know. So it's like um, uh, I just I've just grown to love. I've always loved guitars, but uh, I've had the opportunity to buy some really good guitars now. So yeah, it's uh, it's a part of uh, what I like to do. Right. Um... Thanks for that. Coming back to your vocal arrangements, if you could run us through what exactly it is in a song, you know, which highlights the song, takes it to some other direction, uh, with some examples, and then we'll move to this project that you've opened up for us. Uh, right. I mean, like for example, uh, you know, like a vocal idea that can really uh, become an integral part of the song is uh, like in Dil Chata Hai that. You know that's actually my voice in the song, but uh, uh, Shankar came up with that line, and I thought it was a great line. I mean, uh, you know, and uh, I've sung that in my voice, but uh, I think that that line is something that people wait for in the song. You know, it's a th- it's a part that people wait for. So I mean, now in my job when I'm called in as a vocal producer. very often uh, music directors call me in when the track is have often been have often been dubbed already and uh, they just need to uh, to be uh, you know like the song needs to be embellished basically you know and they they call me in as a specialist to handle all the vocal production on the song so uh, you know like there are many des- decisions that you can take do we do we need a whole like like say let's say for the second music do we need a gospel choir or do we just need four singers you know do you want to make it like really intimate sound or you know uh, and what harmonies what should the harmonies be because very often uh, a certain style of music uh, is defined by the writing of the intervals in the harmonies now to explain that you know slightly more like a slightly simpler way is that let's say if i'm doing an african section if i'm doing an african section you know uh, uh, you do you do very straight parallel harmonies like in an african section you know that defines how it sounds but if you were doing the same thing but approaching it from a slightly jazz r&b style uh, you know uh, uh, you wanted to achieve that sound then you would do more close voicings and you know uh, notes that are slightly dissonant not necessarily parallel thirds you know and uh, uh, very often that's what, that's that's the reason why you know music directors call me in because it's uh, something that i used to do a lot of at that point and uh, i mean i remember doing to some crazy experiments at home because i when i first started uh, journey as far as a vocal producer was concerned i mean i don't think there was uh, there was much vocal production happening at that point in bollywood and whatever it would just be you know very uh, you know kind of random in a way because like you know, a typical people, chorus yeah exactly you know people 16 singers would just come into a room and just everyone be singing the same thing so uh, and i would uh, just be listening to a lot of you know r&b you know that time you know a lot of western music and i would realize i mean uh, just that the vocal vocal sound so lush and so full and what are they doing that we are not doing you know i mean wh- why why haven't i heard a project in this country where the backing vocals really shine and where they where they just sound 
like you know pristine and they have that sheen so i started listening to a lot of albums like all jackson records and like breaking stuff down you know basically even all the quincy jones like from the dude to smack water like all all those quincy jones albums and you just started listening to the harmonies in a very minute microscopic way and breaking them down completely and that's when i realized that that it's all about how you write it's all about the intervals you know within the harmonies that create a sound that you're looking for you know and uh, so that's essentially what a vocal producer does basically it's about uh, creating uh, colors using vocals you know creating textures creating colors and creating bigness or smallness you know you can do all that with a uh, with a set of singers you know who are who can you know who can deliver so it's uh, uh, it's just something that is really specialized but fits into the broad schema the you know the broader scheme of production you know and uh, of course uh, like recently um, uh, i have not had i've not i've been doing a lot of other you know like programming production and composing and stuff so uh, there's this boy newman there's newman pinto who does a lot of vocal arrangements now he's like doing a great job you know so uh, uh, it's basically uh, uh, i think some it's something that uh, has a very unique uh, place in uh, you know bollywood music or you know i mean any music for that matter but uh, it's only been uh, you know uh, explored i think in the last decade you know and never more so than now you know now you hear it it's like quite common place and it's considered an important part you know of what we do correct so this decision of what approach to take to a song is decided by you once you listen to the entire track in most cases in most cases sometimes like in the case of like for example uh, on vishal's vishal ji stuff what i'm doing is uh, since i'm also the producer for the project like for 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 his new film for matru you know uh, i try to design the vocal from the beginning before i've even done the track you know uh so like yeah there, like there was this one song which we which we uh, you know which we kind of fleshed out a bit now which i hadn't done the track at all and the first thing that came to my head was the vocal part you know and based on that vocal part you know i kind of uh, you know decide on what instrumentation the song should have but uh, you know but usually i mean if i'm just being if i've just been called in to write harmonies it's often because the the track needs to be ready at least to a, a 75 80% extent because uh, the parts that you write will depend upon what harmony is already existing in the track so what the keyboard player has played the chords that are already there will define what vocal harmony you can put over it right. because you can't do something that's completely contrary to what's already being done uh, the harmonies that are already existing in the track you know so usually uh, it's always after after you know programming and production is done usually okay um we have this lovely guitar in your hands could you just play us uh, just some of the song of yours that you like or any song ah uh, okay um, well i'll do illustrate like um, like on uh, uh, ekla chalori which is uh, the new song in kahani uh, when i was producing it i uh, i came up with this uh, i mean the brief was that had had to have a gospel kind of influence you know so i you know came up with this line which is uh, based the whole you know song and all the whole movement of the song on the basis of these you know these uh, this like turn around this progression you just so it was just basically these you know just these eight bars pretty much and uh, uh then I got a, a vocal idea over that which is like open thy mind walk alone be not afraid walk alone you know so I just had these two lines and then uh, I wanted to harmonize this you know so uh, now if we move to pro tools I'll show you you know um, how I uh, 
kind of student. took that idea and uh, you know uh, you know took it further so this is uh, i mean you know this is the uh, the kind of uh, more uh, the progression of that idea that i've just played you on the guitar which is uh, you know in pro tools so if i play you the whole song this is what you will hear if you notice you know if you heard it while the track was playing it had this guitar riff which is you know and uh, uh, if if i solo the voices this track is you know the melody and uh, This is how it sounds, you know. Open thy mind, walk alone. Be not afraid, walk alone. Yeah. So this is this is basically just the melodic idea that I had, and. Uh, I mean right now what I've done is I've done I when I was programming the track I did the harmonies uh, just in my own voice but later on we got a you know we got a whole bunch of singers and you know overdubbed and you know made it sound bigger uh, so if I overlay the harmonies you know then if I keep adding one layer at a time you'll hear you know the the sound getting bigger you know if uh, I play you the open time my world alone So that's got a lower fifth. I mean, uh, be not afraid. Walk alone. And then we add like a top voice. Open thy mind. Walk alone. Be not afraid. Walk alone. Yeah, and if I add like a fourth voice, you know. Thy mind, walk alone. You know, and add like another couple of voices, you know, it just keeps getting larger. Ooh, open. Thy mind, walk alone. Be not. Afraid, walk alone. Yeah. So you know this, and again, like I said, this is just my voice. And now, when we call a whole group of singers, what we do is we take each voice and we double track each voice with, like, say, four singers or six singers. So what you're essentially getting is six voices double tracked, which means they sing the same thing twice. You know, so. Uh, in a different pitch or yeah no in the same i mean the same exactly the same thing but they have to sing twice they they, they sing it twice because what we do is we you we kind of pan it so we get like a wider stereo image and then we take the next voice and we do like maybe two two more tracks of that sometimes we do four tracks of the main melody and then we do two tracks of all the other harmonies so at by the end of it what you've essentially got is you've got like six singers six singers six singers six singers six so you it, the 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 sound keeps getting bigger and keeps uh, you know expanding you know so that's a way that's one way in which you can uh, cheat and get like a big choir sound with uh, fewer singers of course different textures and timbers do matter a lot but um, uh, but this is you know the way we do it for most you know most applications and uh, i think uh, this one uh, one uh, once we uh, you know got mary ann and you know nisha and a whole bunch of singers into the guitar but they did a great job and it really sounded huge on the record so great
Thank you so much for sharing this knowledge with us and uh, it was a pleasure having you on the channel. Yeah, I love being here. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you so much.